Record-breaking snowfalls, deadly storms, historic floods. Canadians are experiencing the effects of climate change. And a November poll says most of us are worried. Today, Ontario announced it will join Quebec's cap-and-trade program, expanding its reach to two-thirds of all Canadians. What is cap-and-trade? As the name suggests, the government puts a cap on the level of emissions allowed by industry. Each company gets permits that state how much carbon it can burn. If it wants to burn more, it has to find a company that is burning less and basically trade by those extra permits. The hope is that companies will reduce their emissions over time rather than buy more credits, thus helping the environment. As Thomas Dagler tells us, it does come with a cost. <laughs> two premiers working hand in hand. This is how Canada's two biggest provinces plan to cut greenhouse gas emissions. Ontario is joining a cap and trade market where Quebec already deals with California. It's predictable that our opposition is going to say this is, this is just a tax grab. But the fact is that we must have this conversation. We must show the leadership. The Ontario government says it will take months to figure out exactly how it will adapt the system to that province, so the price tag isn't known yet. It's estimated cap and trade could raise up to $2 billion a year. Companies could likely pass on their extra costs to consumers. For instance, gas prices are already expected to go up two or three cents a litre. But the government says its new money will be reinvested in green projects like public transit and helping businesses reduce pollution. If you think fighting climate change is expensive, try not fighting it and having coastal erosion, healthcare effects, extreme weather events. Meanwhile, across the street, a rare meeting of environmentalists and business leaders together. Many gave the cap and trade plan a thumbs up. So it should enable us to uh, uh, develop uh, products that are uh, greener. We can't use the atmosphere as a garbage dump like we've been doing. And great news, many provinces are doing it. With today's move, Ontario, Quebec, BC and Alberta will all have some form of carbon pricing. Yet Ottawa says they are among the provinces falling short of their targets to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 2020. And we're going to work together to come up with uh, targets. That's why we're asking them for their input so their input can be reflected moving forward to Canada's next target. The federal environment minister has sent the provinces a letter highlighting their gaps, even though the Harper government has been criticized for not publishing its own environmental goals. They don't offer any help at all. All they offer is criticisms. It's whining and criticism. It's not fun. They're not fun people to work with. Tomorrow, the provinces and territories will move forward without the federal government. Nine premiers are expected in Quebec City for a summit on climate change. Noticeably absent due to an election campaign, the premier of Alberta, the biggest carbon-emitting province of them all. Thomas Dagg, CBC News, Montreal.